Johnny and Dolly. The team is supported by ableauctions.ca. Closing your business? We can help. All right. It is Wednesday, and today all of our guests, including Gino Ojik, standing by, brought to you by the Alberni Power and Marine RPM Group. Located in Port Alberni, Alberni Power and Marine is one of Vancouver Island's most trusted boat dealerships, the largest Mercury Marine dealership in Canada. Their service team just won for the fourth straight year a customer satisfaction index score well above the national average. Make your appointment for the 2022 boating season at Alberni Power Marine. Dot com. Just before we get to uh, Gino, Delaney's OK Taryn Langley inbox, Hopping. Adrian in Duncan, the incredible hockey sense Kale McCarr had yeah. to not touch the puck in that split second was uh, awesome. And to, he, he said as much in his, I mentioned this earlier, yeah, you did. in his Hockey Night in Canada I- interview that that was his uh, thought process. He's a, a special, special player. All right, uh, Gino Ojik is being inducted into the BC Sports Hall of Fame next uh, Thursday. It's an event that includes the classes of yep. 2020 and 2021. Uh, Delayed, of course, because of COVID. Uh, what do I start with, Gino? 605 games for the Canucks. He's the team's all-time leader in penalty minutes, uh, one of the most popular players in franchise uh, history. Gino joining us now. Gino, thanks for doing this, uh, my friend. How are you? Doing good, Don. What does this honor mean to you, Gino? That means the world to me, uh, you know, my sister's coming down and my cousin's coming down. And uh, I went to the Canucks alumni tournament and everybody was congratulating me. I'm getting uh, messages from all over the world. Uh, it's a big deal. So I'm really, really honored. Hey, Gino, kid from Quebec, early 90s. Uh, what were your first impressions of, of BC, of Vancouver, as a place to work, play hockey, and a place to live? I really enjoyed it because there's lots of First Nations communities, so I got to go visit them, and I felt right at home. Uh, and then I moved to Musqueam quite early in my career, so um, I really it was it was a match made in heaven. Uh, you're a hero to those people, Gino. Did you take that uh, as a young man? Did you take that responsibility uh, uh, seriously right off the bat? Yeah, I mean, uh, as soon as I got here, Ron Delorme and Pat Quinn, uh, they really encouraged me to to uh, to give back to First Nations communities, and Pat would give me T-shirts and uh, pictures and whatever I needed, jerseys to go visit the communities, and I really appreciated that, and um, it was just it was just awesome. Hey, Gino, your, your popularity in this city, did you ever think it would get that high? I mean, like, you know, <laughs> all around, the, you know, the people chanting your name, the whole nine yards. Did you ever think that one day in one community, one city like Vancouver, you'd get that popular? No, nobody thinks that. I mean, it just uh, came into a perfect situation. The Vancouver Canucks had a small team, and they were getting pushed around, and um, – I came in and did my job and stopped that, and the fans really appreciated it. And we had a perfect connection with the fans. Uh, Pavel Bure, uh, you and him, great friends uh, to this day. Can you give us an update on how Pavel's doing? And uh, maybe, well, how's he doing? <laughs> he's in Moscow. Uh, uh, he's doing good. He's got three kids now. He's married, two dogs. So he's <laughs> living the life. Uh, when you watch, uh, Gino, when you watch the Canucks, it's been a tough time uh, for the alumni. Uh, there hasn't been a lot of winning, Gino, in the last 10 years. Uh, they got a new regime now, and Rutherford said something, Jim, uh, interesting a couple weeks ago. They need more sandpaper. Uh, they need, need more guys like Gino. But would you agree this team needs to get tougher, Gino? Well, they played pretty good uh, under, uh, Bruce, under Boudreau. Bruce Boudreau and uh, – uh, you know, Jim knows he's won uh, some Stanley Cup, so he knows what it, what the team needs. And uh, too bad that Furland can't play because he would yeah. provide that. Uh, but, you know, maybe they'll make a trade and uh, get that type of player. Uh, Gino, you have a, a, a good relationship with Michael Furland going back to when he was uh, in the Flames organization. Any update on how he's doing? 
he's doing good. He, he asked me, what should I do? Should I come back or not? I told him, no, you should, you should uh, worry about your quality of life. And, but he wants to come back to training camp and give it a try. And I don't know what's going to happen, but I, I'd be surprised if he passes physical. Okay, Gina, let's go back in the past uh, again here. Uh, November 21st, 1990, your first game as a Canuck. You're wearing the number uh, 66 against the Blackhawks. I know you get asked this question all the time, but you take on Manson. You, it was in the Stanley Cup final, by the way. Dave Manson and Stu Grimson. The place goes nuts. The Coliseum. What do you remember? Uh, I remember fighting with Manson, and uh, I didn't like the fight. We didn't get going enough, and... Uh, um, I just hit, uh, Grimson and he came after me. I didn't even know what was going on. And, uh, I ended up doing pretty good in the fight and the fans went crazy. And the rest is history. Hey, you mentioned Pat Quinn earlier, the late, great Pat Quinn. How important was he in your life? Do you know? He was really important. I think, uh, he told me right from the get go, I don't want somebody to just come off the bench and, and, uh, fight. You have to be a player. You have to, uh, I'll give you 10 minutes a night. And uh, with, with 10 minutes a night, you have a chance to do something special every game. And uh, whether it's a big hit or a fight at the team's down or if you have to protect the teammate. Uh, so I really enjoyed Pat and he was a big part of my life. Gino, 51 years old, your health issues are well documented. How are you right now? How's your health? Everything's in remission, so touch wood that it stays that way, and uh, we'll uh, we'll continue to fight and just be positive and really appreciate life. When you when you get sick like that, you uh, you don't take life for granted anymore. You really enjoy every day and uh, make sure you tell your family you love them. What's taking up most of your time these days? What are you up to? I'm still partnered with the Aquilinis in Tawasson. They they build houses and on 99 year leases, and uh, so I have a percentage of the project, and that's what's keeping me busy. One more, one more, Gino, if you don't mind. Uh, you, you mentioned your relationship with the Indigenous uh, community in, in BC, and truth and reconciliation is such a big issue in Canada right now. It always has been. Where are we these days, Gino? In your opinion. I think people are understanding and they want to understand and figure out what's going on. So when you, when people want to understand, you have to look at it in a good way. I think things are improving. I seen the other day, they had an economic truth and reconciliation where they want to involve first nation communities and economic ventures. And that's what, that's where it is. I mean, you have to create employment and create, the opportunity for the communities not to rely on the government and living on social assistance. Uh, these these projects will make a ton of difference, I think. You know, anytime you want to come on our show, you're you're more than welcome, and all, all, all the best with uh, with everything. And uh, congratulations, you're in the BC Sports Hall of Fame, or at least you will be <laughs> next Thursday. Yeah, thank you, Don. You bet. Thanks, Gino. Thanks so much.